In this video, Chris Gardner breaks down the ins and outs of diet composition. For one, look at, especially in the beginning, the Atkins diet isn't just lower in carbohydrate, it's lower in carbohydrate and higher in protein. So I want to bring that to your attention. Now I want to show you at a year just the extremes. Okay, those are still pretty big differences at a year if you take the two extreme diets. Now consider this, that's the national health guideline right there. So it looks like shooting for Ornish and falling short puts you right smack into the middle of the national guidelines. Then we'll pit the national guidelines against the challenger, the heretical Atkins, who said everything else is wrong, everybody stand on your head. And so finally, with some science behind it, how does it, how does it work out when you pit the national guidelines versus Atkins? And every single difference favored Atkins head to head. Not that they were really following Atkins, right? They got more, they didn't follow it perfectly, but they definitely got a much lower carbohydrate diet. So how can you dismiss it? A low, you might want to tweak it, and you might want to talk about whipped cream versus nuts and seeds. But on a lower carbohydrate diet, not only did their weight get better, but their risk profile got better too, which seems to be counter to what we've been saying for a decade or two. A higher protein diet is really interesting. For years, it's always been keep protein the same and mix up fat and carb. Well, in the last five, 10 years, I've seen a number of studies come out that I've never seen before where they kept fat constant and played with the protein and carbs. Or they kept carbs constant and played with the protein and fat. And almost every time, protein won. And I mean by winning, their appetite was more satiated and they lost more weight, and their insulin got better, and their triglycerides got better. When you kept one of the other things constant, and you raised the protein. So when you go lower carb, you end up going higher protein, usually. So this is to get back to your point, that maybe it's not the carb. Maybe it's something else, or maybe they're working synergistically. Okay. Now we do have a concern on a really high protein diet, if you don't know this already, there's no place to store it in your body. You store a little bit of carb, and you store endless amounts of fat anywhere you can. But you don't store any protein in your body. It's all functional. Any protein you eat in excess of your need, and if you're not growing or building muscle right now, you need very little protein. We all get way more protein than we need, I can almost promise you. You have to break the protein down and turn it into carbohydrate and fat, and you have to take the nitrogen off it, and the nitrogen turns into ammonia and your kidney and your liver have to deal with it. Um, we're a little worried somebody who has some kind of subclinical kidney problem and they're pouring all this protein into their body. That could exacerbate something. So I, I want to point out those intriguing protein findings, but I want to be a little cautious that if you do really high protein for decade after decade, I'd be a little worried about your kidney. I don't have any data to show that, but I would be a little worried. So, but I'll just toss that in. It's not just low carb. It's high protein, too. OK, now let me go a little beyond that and into types of nutrients, OK? Because it's not just low versus high carb, fat, or protein. We're way more sophisticated than that now. That's, way, that's, so, much, that's so overly simplistic. OK, so for carbs, we can do glycemic index, glycemic load, complex refined, fiber rich. For the fats, we can get our omega-3s. We can avoid the trans. We can argue about flaxseed versus fish oil for omega-3s. We can do the mufa pufa, the monounsaturated fatty acids, and the polyunsaturated fatty acids. And protein isn't the same if it's plant, marine, or animal. If you get the plant protein from soy, you get fiber with it. There's no fiber in any animal food. If you get the marine protein from fish, you get omega-3s. There's hardly any omega-3s in beef or pork, unless they're grass-fed, which they're not these days. And the animal protein is a lot more saturated fat. So it's really overly simplistic to just say carbohydrate, fat, or protein. So we can do a lot better than that. And for a long time, we've said, come on, you know better than this. You should be eating your brown rice and your whole wheat bread. Because at the same level of calories for the same serving, you'll get the same number of carbs, but you'll get double the fiber and a lot more nutrients from the brown rice. And the same thing will happen for the whole wheat bread. Right? Same calories, same carbs, but a lot more nutrients if you go for the whole wheat. And we can say that for the fats if you get your fat from avocado. And look how I tried to do this. I tried to make each one of those servings the same number of calories, even though it makes it a little bit odd in some cases. So to get about 175 calories, if I go red light, green light, and I make saturated fat the bad guy, which might be an overstatement, but we'll go with that for now. 
Omega-3s, fiber, maybe the protein's good. So for an avocado, look at all this fiber you get. You're not going to get any from fish or cheese. If you get the fish, you're going to get gobs of protein when you get the fat. Right? You're going to get a little omega-3 in walnuts and a bunch in fish when you eat that. So not all the fats are the same. And if you go for protein, how many of you like edamame? I hope everybody's tried it. Yes. I should have no preaching to the choir here. OK, so a cup of edamame, 250 calories, four ounces of fish, three and a half eggs to get that many calories, and the three ounces of steak. So if you match all those levels, you get far more fiber from the edamame. You get a bunch of omega-3s here. I don't know if you've found the omega-3 eggs yet, but potentially you could get omega-3 from the eggs. I don't know if it's fish omega-3. I'm guessing it's flax omega-3, and that's a whole other discussion. <laughs> um, but you get a bunch of saturated fat from the eggs and more from the steak. You'd only get this much if you ate three and a half eggs, though. So that's a little high on the egg scale. But we're much more sophisticated than just fat, protein, and carbs. So it's not just low carb. We could do low carb several different ways. We could do high fat several different ways. And we probably should. But most people don't buy nutrients. They buy foods. And the thing that's hardest for nutritionists to do it is not just simply say, go get more omega-3s. Go get less saturated fat. We should tell you what to buy. Tell you to buy salmon and tell you to buy avocados, but we usually don't. We usually tell you to buy nutrients.